Two of the most misunderstood clauses in the Constitution are the Commerce Clause and the Second Amendment. But in both cases, the misunderstanding centers around the meaning of the word regulate. Nowadays, we consider the word regulate to mean restriction and prohibition. But is this what it has always meant? Is this how we should read the word when it appears in the Constitution? The Commerce Clause is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, which says that Congress shall have the power to regulate commerce among the several states. This is commonly known as the Interstate Commerce Clause, although as you can see the words interstate commerce appear nowhere. It is widely interpreted today to mean that Congress can pass whatever restrictions it likes against forms of commerce that move from state to state, again, based on what we today consider the meaning of the word regulate. The Second Amendment is another place in the Constitution where we see the word regulate. Again, here it is being used by gun control advocates as justification. If Congress has the power to regulate the militia, then it must be able to restrict arms, require licenses, etc. Because, as we all know, the word regulate means prohibit, right? First of all, remember from Lecture 3 that the Bill of Rights confers no new powers on Congress. It only restricts Congress's enumerated powers. But even so, we'll look at the meaning of regulate and see if there is any justification here at all. One note, you usually see two extra commas in this amendment, one after militia and the other after arms. This is due to a transcription error and was not in the amendment as proposed by Congress and ratified by the states. No special meaning or changes to the amendment should be inferred by their presence as some gun control advocates do. So what does the word regulate mean? Does it include the power to prohibit? Remember from Lecture 2 that we must go by the meaning of the word as it existed at the time of ratification. So what did people at the time mean by regulate? Perhaps a good place to start is with the dictionary definition from a dictionary widely used at the time. At the time, the biggest English dictionary was Samuel Johnson's. His name was used the way Noah Webster's is used today. He began his work in 1746 and was finished nine years later with only a single clerk for assistance. It came to be seen as definitive, used throughout the English-speaking world. The entire text is available for free at books Dot Google dot com. Johnson's dictionary defined regulate as to adjust by rule, to direct. In other words, regulate at its core means to make regular. Regular meaning orderly or agreeable to rule. Essentially, to regulate something is to say, if you want to do this, here is the process you must go through. This is in diametric opposition to prohibition or limitation. So to regulate commerce among the states means to make such commerce regular, to stop states from imposing restrictions, duties, or excises on goods from other states, and to encourage the free flow of commerce. In the case of the Second Amendment, remember that it is the militia that is well regulated and not arms. This means that the militia should have sufficient resources to make it regular, and have the ability to follow the necessary requirements to make it effective. An armed citizenry is crucial to this end. In fact, since the whole point of the amendment is to stop the government restricting arms, then regulating as prohibition is nonsensical. Another place to look for the meaning is in the ratification conventions. In the records from these conventions, we see the word regulate being used to describe the government's role in elections, jury trials, courts, and many other aspects of government. Obviously, there is no plausibility in the reading of regulate to mean restriction or prohibition in these cases. Another good place to go see the commonly used meaning of words is in newspapers. The Pennsylvania Gazette is the newspaper for which the most articles survive to this day. According to a study by Randy E. Barnett of George Mason University, during the period of ratification, the Gazette used the word regulate 393 times and regulation 410 times. In each and every case, the usage was consistent with the meaning to make regular. There was no sense at all in which it implied restriction or prohibition. But perhaps the most obvious and unimpeachable source for this is the Constitution itself, as it mentions regulate in many other places. Seeing how the word is used elsewhere in the Constitution demands a consistent reading in the Commerce Clause and the Second Amendment. For example, 
In Article 1, Section 4, the state legislatures are given the power to set the times, places, and manners of holding their elections. It also gave Congress the power to alter such regulations. Setting a time, place, and manner of something is therefore regulating, but there is no sense in which any of this is any kind of prohibition. Prohibiting an election or restricting the votes would be an affront to our liberties. Also, Clause 5 of Article 1, Section 8 gives Congress the power to regulate the value of money. Notice that this does not confer any kind of power on Congress to prohibit money or restrict who can use it. It can't even regulate its value to zero. But nowhere is it more plain than in Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2. Here it gives Congress the power to make both exceptions and regulations to the appellate power of the Supreme Court. By making exceptions separate from regulations, it makes it completely clear beyond any doubt that the word regulation does not in any way include restrictions or prohibitions, or else there would have been no need to also explicitly grant them the power to make exceptions. Now, does giving Congress the power to regulate mean that absolutely no power to restrict is inferred? No, because quite clearly there are cases where the restrictions are necessary to regulate, but it is not the thing being regulated that the restrictions are levied against. That would be contradictory. For example, the Commerce Clause makes sure that commerce shall be regular. In that sense, there are many restrictions that should not be placed on commerce. So in the power to regulate is the power to stop the states from placing restrictions on commerce, which is itself a restriction. It's not a restriction on commerce, however, it's a restriction on the state's ability to interfere with commerce. The defining case on this issue, and indeed one of the biggest defining cases on the Constitution itself, is Gibbons versus Ogden. The state of New York had restricted navigation of its waters from a privately run ferry from New Jersey that competed with a ferry run by the state of New York. The Supreme Court found that since by restricting navigation they were restricting commerce, specifically the service of a ferry, that the state of New York was in violation of the Commerce Clause. Indeed, how can one engage in commerce among the states without something crossing the state lines? Here is the Commerce Clause used in its proper scope, stopping the states from putting restrictions on commerce that moves in or out of them. So, despite how this word regulate has been misinterpreted by politicians, pundits, and the courts, it is very easy to see that the Commerce Clause in no way restricts how people and businesses may conduct commerce with each other, merely preserving and making regular the means by which they can do so. Likewise, in the Second Amendment, the word regulate in no way allows the government to restrict or prohibit the keeping and bearing of arms. In fact, it's just the opposite. The understanding of this one crucial word shows how the Constitution is there to preserve our liberty from the power of the state more than anything else in the entire text. We must therefore vocally correct those who would misinterpret our rights into non-existence. Until next time, stay strong and be free.